A reading from the Gospel of Luke. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came out of his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard that you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except for Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up and drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is such an interesting story in our scripture, and it's here and it's also in Mark. And every time I read this passage, I'm caught on what changed. Here we have Jesus uh, fulfilling his custom, his practice of um, attending the synagogue on the Sabbath, worshiping. Uh, He was clearly uh, viewed as a leader. He was invited to read scripture and to teach as he had done in other synagogues. And it was no different at the synagogue in his hometown. He stood up and he reads the scripture from Isaiah and sits down and the crowd was amazed. Literally says they were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They inquired, is this not Joseph's son? Doesn't necessarily have a sarcastic tone to it. We can't tell from scripture, but it could continue the amazement. So what changed from being amazed to driving him to the edge of a cliff, to throw him off the cliff. Well, Jesus talks about other prophets and how they had not been accepted in their own towns. And what really Jesus is highlighting is portions of uh, Old Testament stories and, and scripture in which God embraced, healed, loved, and reached out to the Gentiles. He highlights three different stories, and they all have to do with God loving people outside of the family, if you will, of Israel. So that is what caused people to change. That Jesus was teaching them and telling them and reminding them that God's love and God's grace and God's healing is there for all of God's people not just for them, not just for the people of Israel. And that's what caused them to get angry and uh, and rile them up enough that they wanted to kill him. I don't think that's all that different uh, with struggles that we have today. We have certain uh, graces. We experience love. We experience privileges. And I can speak for myself As a white woman, I have a lot of privileges. And there's something about the idea of that love and that grace being extended to everyone that somehow feels threatening. Threatening enough to throw a man off a cliff. 
There have been a lot of people whose lives have been ended because of this very same threat throughout history and today. But the reality is, is that God's love and God's grace is for everyone. It was true during Jesus's time, and it is true for us today. So when those moments arise for us, when we feel that sense of threat, when something that we experience is shared with others, we need to pay attention to that. Because this, this sin that I'm sure I know that I've experienced, and I'm sure many of us have experienced, whether it has to do with our race, with our whiteness, if we are white, with other things, with our jobs, with families, with siblings, when that love, when that grace, whatever it is, extends to other people, and we feel that, we have to pay attention to it. We have to repent, and we have to work to turn away from that and allow God's love to flow over all of us. Amen.